following program is intended for mature audiences. The time is now for the hardest hit, yet completely trivial, football show on the planet. You are in rarefied territory. Ladies and gentlemen, well, well to the broken helmet. Let's rock. Hey, coming to you live on tape on this game day, Sunday, October 23rd, week 7 of the NFL season is here upon us. Solo show today as my brother ended up taking off and going to enjoy some kind of wedding or something like that. I mean, come on. Stop enjoying your personal life. Shelve that. And get on the microphone and get on the show. But anyway, he is out of commission today, so I will be rolling by myself to present you all of the game's lines and ultimately our bets for this Sunday. So I know Donald joined the show for anybody that heard it last game day. Donald will not be joining the show here because this is, you know, more or less our flagship show. And I think Don is better left off on his own for solo shows as he works on his broadcasting acumen and tries to develop a little bit more of a round you know a more rounded show he needs to work on his presentation a little bit stop talking about his Camaro and his T-tops you know you can only talk about your throwback 80s car so many times before it's kind of like Dude, what else do you got for the show, you know? So anyway, uh, like I said, it'll be Rich Eggy here for this Sunday. Um, without further ado, we'll jump into the stats from last week. A little bit better than the week before. Still not great. Some of the, you know, the themes have stuck with us as we've gone on. So we will do our normal update for first down. Get into the two best games go through the rest of the slate, and then hit you up with our gambling picks. So without further ado, let's rock. First down. Okay, well, week six saw a tie as the favorites and the dogs split the 14 games, seven and seven. The dogs are still owning the season at 55%. As for the dogs winning outright, we always talk about how you can Put a little extra money in your pocket if you're able to piece some of these dog wins in a money line parlay. Well, last week, six of those seven dogs won outright. So there it is. Even more data to back up that money line parlay for the dogs to, uh, you know, jack up that bankroll. Home dogs were 4-4 four and four last week, 54% on the season now. Unders owned last week at 10-4, and four, and they are 62% on the year. As for teases... We're still coming in at what you'd expect more so on the spreads than the totals. The spreads last week were 71%. The over the total points was 63%. And once again, it was the overs that just couldn't hold their water, right? They couldn't hold their uh, end of the bargain, that is. The overs were 7-7 seven and seven when teased. So they're only coming in at 56% for the season. As for the favorites and the dogs, it's still about the dogs, right? They own the crown for the season, and they have 76% of the teases coming in in their favor. Favorites are still okay at 67%, but it's been dogs, it's been unders, that's been the trend so far. Teams with a halftime lead last week, they were 7-5, and five, so that is the one thing I continue to look at that's different from years past. Again, me and my brother have been doing the show about four years, And you usually see those halftime leads come in 75, 80%, give or take. But this year, it's only at 69%. 69. (laughs) So that's a little bit different. So usually the games were over. My brother said last week, well, isn't that more entertaining to actually see the games that aren't over at halftime? For sure. It's just different. So, again, teams with the halftime lead, only 69% on the year. As for my brother and I, uh, last week I went 5-9, and nine, he went 6-8. and eight. I still got him 46% to 45% on the year. That's picking all the games. The 272, if you will. As for our super picks, our best five of the week, I went 2-3, and three, he went 3-2. and two. I still got him a little bit there, 48% to his 40. Best bets were... St- 
Both of us are at 33% on the year. Our parlays and teases are terrible. Uh, parlays, I'm at 17%. Chris has not hit one. He is over. Mm. Can you believe that? Over on his parlays. Teases, we're both at 17%. And then prop bets, my brother's coming in at about 50%. I'm at 33 after last week. So let's talk about the monies. The money, the ticket, and the sharps, right? See how they went? Well, it's still all about the Sharps this year. They were 10 and 2 last week. 10 and 2. I mean, come on. That is just monster week. They're coming in at 64% for the year. The money comes in next. They're at 59% for the year. And then the tickets, they're, I mean, come on. It's the public. It's why you want to stay away from them. 42%. They were 4 and 9 last week. So they're well under 500. So that is where we stand here after six weeks of the regular season. Let's look at the two best games to talk about this week. I mean, there's one for sure, and that's the one we'll start off with. Chiefs and the 49ers. Second down. Second down. <laughs> And this game will actually be our first home dog of the weekend. There are three home dogs currently. Uh, actually, four now, as we will talk about the Jets later on. But they have now flipped with the Broncos, with Russell Wilson going to the bench. So there are four home dogs. This is the first one. Chiefs favored by one point against the 49ers. The over under 48.5 points. Right now, 71% of the tickets and 60% of the money pool in favor of the Chiefs. The spreads, by the way, and all lines are courtesy of DraftKings. I pulled those lines this morning around 8.30, 9 o'clock, and any time that we talk about statistics, they are compliments of the Action Network app, and I have pulled them around the same time. So now that we have our footing and understand where we're coming from, back to where we were, the Chiefs here, one point favorite. You know, you, you look at the, the stats, DVOA for the two teams, and you know Kansas City is second in offense. It's all offense for them, and then all of a sudden their defense falls all the way down to 28th. Meanwhile, you flip it around, you look at San Francisco. San Francisco's pretty much all defense right now. They're third DVOA, and then their offense is down at 15th. So not such a fall for San Francisco between their two squads compared to Kansas City. Regardless, I... Surprising that Kansas City is the favorite here on the road? I don't think so. I think, again, they are a public team. I think people like Mahomes and the fact that he is who he is compared to Garoppolo, who's taking over a 49er team that might might have better talent both sides of the ball. But again, without the quarterback, what are you? And Garoppolo comes off the bench, obviously, for Lance, who blew his ankle out uh, earlier in the year. And he's kind of settled in, has not looked great. They obviously have that terrible loss last week to Atlanta. Atlanta, a, a feisty team that you have now heard endlessly as they are 6-0 and against the spread. And everybody loves their run game and the fact that they're doing it different. Uh, you know, to me... Atlanta, real quick here, it's funny because I thought that New England last year when they finally jettisoned, uh, when they got rid of Brady, well, two years ago, they, they were going to go this route that Atlanta's going with the run game. And uh, they haven't. They, they definitely have not uh, explored the run game in the ways I thought that New England would. And now you look at Atlanta, and Atlanta's doing a lot of... 12, 21 personnel, things that run counter to modern football where it's all you know 11 personnel. But uh, Atlanta, a feisty team, and they end up giving the 49ers a loss last week. 49ers 3-3, three and three, Chiefs 4-2. and two. 49ers are probably the team in their division looking you know down the future that is sitting in the best spot here. And now they go out and they trade for McCaffrey, who is going to play in this game. So you'll get to see run, you know, CMC. Is that what it is? Run CMC? Uh, you know, a little bit and see what he can do uh, in Shanahan's offense here. I, I don't know if he's going to have that much of an impact. It's kind of a, a tough ask. But a running back, uh, you know, you never know. Uh, running backs are, you know, kind of plug-and-play material. So you might be able to see some contribution out of Christian in this game. But again, you know, this game right now is Kansas City's number two offense versus San Francisco's number three defense. When you flip it around, you know, San Francisco, I think they're a, probably a stronger 15 than you would think. And Kansas City's defense, again, 
uh, you know, Chris is going to just say, oh, so bring up Spagnoli. You know you want to. But, you know, it is. I, you know, Steve brings some pressure here and there. And when he doesn't, it doesn't really work out in his favor. So, again, surprised that the Chiefs are a one-point favorite here on the road. No. I am a little surprised that I, I thought the 49ers would have gotten more love uh, especially on the money. I know that the Sharps right now are taking San Francisco. The money, though, for a 4 o'clock game, it's still 60% in favor of the Chiefs. Uh, I ultimately am taking the Chiefs here, too. Uh, you know, I like the San Francisco team on a whole, but push comes to shove. I'm picking, I'm, I'm picking Mahomes over Garoppolo here. Jimmy G, uh, you know, maybe toward the end of the year, he'll be a little more polished, but he's still, I mean, he's always been kind of a mess. He's been a little bit more of a mess here in the early stretch as he's just trying to get his footing. Uh, Kittle's coming back. Kittle actually had an okay game last week. He was a little rough in the beginning. Uh, You know, offense, obviously, we'll see if McCaffrey has any kind of impact on the rest of those pieces there. You're going to have Eliza Mitchell coming back, and you got Hasty too. So, I mean, they'll have plenty of talent in the backfield. You have, as I mentioned, uh, Kittle, who came around last week, Ayuk, plus Debo Samuel, who's been rather quiet here in the beginning of 2022. Uh, So I I like San Francisco down the road right now. I'm going to pick the Chiefs here and the one point. So then we will head out to our next game. This one is going to be played in Tennessee. Tennessee coming off the bye. They are taking on the Colts. They are two and a half point favorites right now at home. Titans three and two on the year. The Colts three, two, and one. Obviously, that tie early. The over-under is 42 and a half points. Right now, there is no sharp lean. As for the money and the tickets, they're both slightly on the Colts right now. 52% of the tickets, 54% of the money. As for DVOA, what are we looking at? Tennessee. Indianapolis both struggling on the offensive side of the ball. Tennessee's 19, Indianapolis at 31. On the other side, it's kind of more the same. It's just a little bit improved. Indianapolis and Tennessee have the 13th and 17th ranked defenses respectively. And so you're looking at two teams that have a better defense than they do in offense. And in terms of Indianapolis, I mean... It was really tough sledding in the beginning of the season. They pieced things together here in the last four. They're three of four over that stretch. Their loss was actually to the Titans in week four, 24 to 17. So here you get to see a rematch of earlier in the year. Uh, it's more Derrick Henry. Uh, They've changed their offense a little bit. Tennessee, that is, where they put Bobby Trees in there. A.J. Brown is gone. Traylon Burks, their big draft pick, he's been banged up. Played a little bit, not great. You know, I think in this game, I know that the Colts right now have got, you know, some people under their spell. I have not been a Colts picker this season. Uh, I'm not going to be a Colts picker here in Tennessee. It's two and a half points. I just got to get to three with the hometown team. I like Vrabel in this spot. I like coming off the bye. And, you know, the Colts have looked better than I've given them credit for. They have improved as time has gone on. Uh, You know, eventually three out of the last four, and now you have to go face the team that you lost to on the road in this case. And I don't think it's going to line up for them. Plus, you only got to get the three points to get the win if you're the Titans. I think they should be able to run the ball here on Indianapolis. Indianapolis's defense right now on the rush is actually the better of the two. They're sixth against the rush, 18th against the pass. Um, But I think that Derrick Henry and that offense might be able to generate a little bit of yardage, enough especially to get Tannehill in his rhythm. And we'll see what him and Bobby Trees have in store for this afternoon. So again, I'm taking the Titans. My brother is on the opposite side. He is going to be taking the Colts. If I didn't mention his pick before, and my apologies, uh, he was going with the Chiefs as well. So both me and my brother were on the Chiefs. Here we're going to be on opposite sides. I am going to be taking the Titans. My brother is going to be taking the Colts. Over under in this game is 42 and a half points. And like I said, right now, no sharp lean and everything else is on the Colts. So... With that said, let's head down to the head 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 down head down. What the hell is that, Rich? Head down. Let's head out to the rest of the games, and we will start with 
my hometown favorite, the New York Giants facing off against the Tennessee t- Tennessee Titans. Here I go. Now I'm just crashing as I'm trying to get in here. Let's just kick the down off, and then I'll start over. Third down. So like I said, here's the rest of the games for the weekend. Jaguars facing off against the Giants. This game in Jacksonville. Jags a three-point favorite against the Giants. Right now the over-under is 42 points. The Money is on the side of the Jaguars. Pretty hefty, too. 68% of the money pool currently with Jacksonville. Meanwhile, 55% of the tickets are with the Giants. The uh, the Sharps have not taken a lean in this game. Uh, my brother and I are again going to be split. He's going to go with the Giants here. I, you know, This is why me and him just never picked the Giants or the Jets being, and I'm sure people across the nation feel the same way about their hometown teams, whether or not they're fans of them or not. But for whatever reason, it just never seems to go your way when you're picking against the hometown team. So this year we're covering our bases as I'm going to go with the Jaguars and he is going with the Giants. So the Eggy brothers as a whole will be right in this game. One of us will be wrong, but as a as a whole, we will be correct. So Jaguars, uh, Giants, I am taking the Jags. My brother is going to be taking the Giants. So we will be heading out to Carolina for the next game. Bucks taking on the Panthers. Bucks a huge favorite here, obviously. Carolina has traded Christian McCaffrey. He is no longer on the squad. That team is on a full gut job. Buccaneers now favored by 13 points on the road here. So this is our second home dog of the week. Panthers, what do you got going in your favor? Not a whole lot. 13 is still a lot of points. Right now, 72% of the tickets and 76% of the money is are on the Buccaneers with that 13 points, or at least as time has progressed to the point of 13 points. I don't know. I don't know if I can get behind that. My brother is going to hop on with the Bucks here. I am going to end up taking the Panthers. Uh, the Sharps are going to lean with me toward the Carolina side. Over under in this game is 40 points, so you're not looking at a whole lot of action here. Buccaneers, Panthers. Packers are going to be another road favorite. They are taking on the Commanders. They are favored by 4.5 points currently over Washington. The over under in this game is 41.5 points. The Sharps and a lot of money are leaning toward Washington in this place. 71% of the money is on Washington. And then the tickets are slightly in favor of Green Bay at 56%. I'm going to end up taking the Packers as is my brother. I can't speak for him, but at least for me... I think with everything going wrong for the Packers, at at some point you need a a get-right game, a regression to the mean uh, the other way, obviously, for Green Bay. And I think that this might be it. Commanders are flipping around. They're going to go with Taylor Heineke at... uh, under center as uh, what's his face Wentz is hurt now. What's his face? That that's a good way to present <laughs> present something that you're broadcasting. You know what's his face shows a, a lot of knowledge and thorough professionalism and expertise when you refer to people as what's his name. But anyway, Washington with Heineke. Sometimes you see this go the other way. I just think right now I'm going to side with Green Bay and trying to get things moving in the right direction where everything a little bit is in flux. A little bit is a lot in flux for Washington right here. Again, Heineke goes under center. Maybe that fixes some of the wrongs that Washington has. It's not the way that I'm seeing it, so I'm going with Green Bay as is my brother. Next up are the Lions. They are coming off a bye, and they're going to be traveling to Dallas to take on the Cowboys. Currently, Dallas is a a 6.5-point favorite over the Lions. The over-under in this game is 49 points. Right now, all of the money and just a slight lean on tickets is in favor of the Lions. 86% of the money pool likes the Lions in this spot, and 51% on the tickets, so it's just basically a coin flip. And there is no sharp lean, so you want to come to us because we're the sharps? Fine. Well, we're split. My brother's going to be taking Dallas here. I'm going to be taking the Lions off the bye. Six and a half points, I think, is a lot. Uh, my doesn't phase my brother as all at all. He is going with Dallas. Bengals going to be hosting the Falcons. We mentioned the Falcons before. They're coming off that big win versus uh, San Francisco last week. They're going to be traveling to Cincinnati, who is going to have a six and a half point favorite in this six and a half point favorite that who are going to be six and a half point favorites in this game here. So Burrow. They think that his offense is going to be able to light it up. Maybe the Falcons. I was talking regression from the mean the opposite way. Oh, my Jimmy Cephalo talking like that. Anyway, 
here you might see a little bit of regression in the mean. Falcons six and zero versus the spread. My brother's going to go with the Falcons. I'm going to ultimately go with the Bengals. I know six and a half is a lot, but I think they might be able to open it up a little bit here on that Falcons defense, which has played you know fairly well. You look at a DVOA, and it doesn't really show that they're they're 29th DVOA. It's been more with Atlanta's offense than their defense, where Atlanta's offense is seventh, and it's got the number one rushing attack DVOA. And they're going to be going into Cincinnati, whose defense has been the better side of their uh, squad right now. Coming in eighth, they're 16th against the rush. So if you want to say, hey, you know, six and a half is a lot of points, you can point to Cincinnati's, you know, weak rushing or, or Atlanta's, uh, you know, solid rushing offense, you know, coming in at first. And then Cincinnati's defense, which can't defend the rush, coming in at 16th. So that might be the where you want to hang your hat if you're going to go with Atlanta in this game. Then maybe that's what my brother's thinking. Who knows? But I'm not. I'm going to go with Cincinnati. He is going with the Falcons. Right now, the tickets are signing with him. 52% coming in on the Falcons. 52% of the money coming in on the Bengals. Sharps are going to go with Atlanta. If I hadn't said the over-under, it is 47 points. Browns are going to be going into Baltimore. Here you go. So you got... The uh, battle of Art Modell, if you will. The Art Modell Bowl, right? Everything's got to be a bowl. So this is the Art Modell Bowl here. Ravens, Browns. Ravens currently another six and a half point favorite. So you got the Bengals first. Now you got the Ravens at six and a half, almost a full touchdown favorite here. The over under is 45 and a half. Right now, everything on the Ravens, especially the money, 73% of the money pool is in on Baltimore, 61% of the tickets. No lean from the Sharps. Both my brother and I are going to be taking Baltimore in. In this spot. Six and a half is a lot of points. It, it is. I just don't have faith in the Browns. I got torched with them last week because I thought that they were going to come and be able to come in that spot with New England and, and you watch that game. God, Cleveland just did not look good. I mean, New, New England did look good. Give them a little bit of credit, but I thought that game was more the Browns looking pretty putrid. And now you got to go up against a Ravens team at home. Granted, they lost J.K. Dobbins, but he hadn't really been a huge contributor to that team all year. But they're coming off a loss now at home, looking for you know the comeback, get right game again. Here, I think it comes in. So Ravens for the Eggie brothers and the six and a half. Jets are going to be traveling into Denver to take on the Broncos. Obviously, there is no Russell Wilson in this game. He got pulled, so Brett Rippon is going to be under center. The Jets, they opened up. I think they were three-point dogs. It moved uh, you know, toward them as the week went on, and then obviously once Wilson went down, that was it. That was flipping. It might have flipped anyway, right? The Jets might have become favorites regardless of Wilson, but right now they are a road favorite at one and a half points. The over-under in this game is 30. Eight. The Sharps are going to be taking the Broncos here, as are the, as is the money pool, because right now 64% is going in favor of the Broncos when to- talking about the money. The tickets, heavy on the Jets, 68%. Jets have become a, a darling very quickly of the uh, betting public as they were terrible out of the gate. Joe Flacco not getting it done. Not that Zach Wilson was, but his return kind of changed things around. Sala tells everybody he's taking names. I'm sure he's patting himself on the back right now as the Jets have been on a little mini tear here and the tickets are going to hop all over New York and that one and a half points that's up to this day you know I don't know if anything's going to change between now and game time but I am ultimately I was with the Jets early I was with the Jets my brother is with the Jets but I'm going to flip my pick I'm actually going to go on the side of Denver at this point Um, you know I like the Jets as a three-point dog. I love them. Now, as a one and a half point favorite, I don't know. You know, may- maybe the Brett Rippon thing changes things for Den- for Denver. I- look, their defense is rocking. Rocking and rolling. They are second DVOA, first against the pass, right? 18th against the rush. So the Jets get a little bit there because the Jets' rush with Brees Hall has been pretty standout so far. So at least they'll get a little bit of breathing room, room here. But I wonder if Denver's defense doesn't just floor Zach Wilson in this game and maybe it, it's the uh, wake up call that some Zach Wilson haters have been waiting for as he's come in there. He only had what, 100 yards last game or something like that? I mean it was really terrible but may I think he might struggle here on the road even with Rippon under center so I'm going to flip my pick I'm going to go from the Jets to the Broncos my brother is going to is going to be with the Jets 
And so that is good. that game is, I think it's a 1 o'clock, or it could be a 4, because they usually like to split the Jets and the Broncos. So check your local listings, as they say. But anyway, uh, Eggie Brothers on opposite ends for the Jets-Broncos game. Raiders going to be hosting the Texans. Raiders coming off a bye. They are six and a half point, and I, Texans coming off a bye as well. So this is a battle of the buys here in Las Vegas at the Death Star. Raiders six and a half point favorites currently over Houston. Forty five and a half is the over under. The tickets right now slightly leaning toward Las Vegas. The money with Houston and heavy too. Seventy five percent of the cash is going to be with Houston in this one. I am going to take Houston. Uh, they have not performed as well as I thought they were going to. I, I didn't think they were a good team, but I thought they were going to be scrappy enough and they were going to, you know, be able to hang with it with some of these spreads. Then they go and they 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 beat you uh, Jacksonville, who I thought they were going to lose to. So I mean, they've been scrappy in spots, not scrappy in others. Here, six and a half points. That's a lot of points to give to Las Vegas to a Raiders team that I mean, come on, what have they really done to warrant a six and a half point favorite line? Right? I mean, they. It's been a terrible year. I mean, we've made a, made fun of McDaniel's a little bit, as this is his second go round with a squad that was probably in a better spot than when he got sent out to Denver, and they have not performed well at all. And so bad that at the end of the last game against Kansas City, you get Devontae Adams getting so frustrated he's just chucking, uh, whatever. Uh, what was the guy, cameraman maybe, or just a regular a sound guy? Whoever it was just threw an innocent bystander to the side just all frustrated, which ultimately resulted in nothing, which I cannot believe. I can't believe he didn't get suspended from that. But, uh, you know, I guess they just don't want to send, you know, I could see maybe they get a win here. Maybe there's a revisit uh, of that because there really should have been some kind of suspension. You can't just go and blast random people on the sidelines. I'm surprised that, again, that the NFL didn't put more uh, emphasis on that to uh, try to, you know, make a case out of them. But they didn't. Anyway, so everybody's playing here in this one. My brother's going to take the Raiders. I'm going to be taking the Texans. Again, I just thought that six and a half was a little bit too much for the Raiders, even though they are at home off a bye, and the Texans are off a bye as well. So battle of the byes, uh, and the Aggie boys are split. Chargers are going to be hosting the Seahawks. Seahawks, another betting darling child, right? The Falcons for sure. People have been all over the Seahawks here. Seahawks are actually a six-point dog against the Chargers here on the road. Chargers team. And then, again, I'll just go right off of where I came from in the last game and my critique. I don't know where the Chargers get off being a six-point favorite against Seattle. I Are they the better team? Maybe. But Seattle has played way better than to be a six-point dog here against the Chargers. It, it smells, which means that probably the Chargers end up winning by 14. But as of right now, I'm going to end up taking the Seahawks. My brother's going to take the Chargers in that six points. Where is all the money in the tickets? They're all on the side of the Seahawks. Same thing with the Sharps. Sharps are on the Seahawks. 74% of the tickets are on the Seahawks. And 90% of the money right now is on the Seahawks. I I mean, it's just, again, it's head-scratching the way that this game was laid out. But there it is. Chargers, a big favorite. Everybody on the Seahawks. That scares me shitless because usually when you see these trifectas, that being the Sharps tickets and money's all on one side, it never works out in your favor. But I'm going to be siding with Seattle and everybody else, basically, in that one, too. Over-under in this game is going to be 51 points. So then we talked about the Chiefs and 49ers. So that ultimately brings us to a little Sunday night football where we will see not a great one. You know, you get to see the return of Tua, I guess, which is how you're going to try to salvage this game. But you got the Dolphins at home taking on the Steelers. The Steelers, I am not sure as of right now. I'm pretty sure it's Trubisky under center with Pickett suffering the concussion last week. Regardless, this is all about Tua and his return to the Dolphin lineup. Dolphin, huge favorite in this one. Seven and a half points is the line. 45 is the over-under. The Sharps are going to end up leaning toward Pittsburgh, but everything else is with the Dolphins. Money heavier than the tickets at 64% versus the 56% for the tickets. My brother's going to take the big big side here. He's going to take the Dolphins in the 7.5 points. Me, again, I, I 
took the Steelers. I don't know where the, the Dolphins, nor the Chargers, nor the Raiders are getting off being these huge favorites. But uh, I am not going to take the Dolphins in the seven and a half here. I'm going to take the Steelers. Uh, I'm going to side with basically the Sharps as, uh, you know, I guess the Sharps have been on fire this year. And for me, seven and a half is just too much. It's just too much for a Steelers team that, look, maybe Tua comes in, the offense is popping, and they, with all that speed, they just, you know, crush a, a n- really not great Pittsburgh team and open it up here on Sunday Night Football. I, I just, I'm hesitant to go that route because, I, you know, you've just seen it. You know, you've seen, number one, the dogs come in, unders come in. So it's been dogs and unders as th- what the trend is. And here you've gotten three games we just talked about where it's favorites and, you know, big spreads. You know, it just it, it doesn't really gel for me. So I'm going Steelers here. My brother's going to end up going with the Dolphins. And that leaves one game left on the ticket, and that's the Monday Night Football. <laughs> And that's going to be the Patriots hosting the Bears. New England, an eight-point favorite. Eight-point favorite. And here's where I, I, you know, become a complete hypocrite. Because the Patriots, an eight-point favorite over Chicago with an over-under of 40 points. So not looking at any points in this one. And here I am just shitting on big lines and taking the favorite with the big lines. And especially New England. I, New England's probably going back to Mac Jones here in this spot. Uh, I'm going to take Zappy and put him on the bench. And I, you know, what your gut says, you pick Chicago in the eight points, but it's not what I'm doing. I'm ta- I'm actually taking the big spread here. Like I said, hypocrite nation, uh, you know, first and foremost here in Hohokus, New Jersey, as I end up taking New England, as my brother takes New England as well, and the Sharps take New England, and the tickets take New England. So, like, everybody's taking New England, especially the tickets, 79% in on the Patriots there, 56% of the money leaning toward the Bears. But it, for whatever reason, my gut saying New England is able to control the Bears. Not to mention, the other thing that I think about in this game is I think about Bill Belichick versus Justin Fields and a Chicago team that is just simply not great. And so I think that if Belichick has his way with Fields, they're not going to really be able to put up many points. And then if New England just controls the rock and controls the ground game, I mean, they... they, Chicago should be putty in New England's hands, and that's the way that I'm leaning in this one. So, again, my brother and I are on the side of the Sharps and the tickets. Everybody except for the money in this one, as we're going to take the Pats and the eight points. So, those are all the games for the week, and that brings us to our gambling segment. Fourth down. All right, week seven. This is where we pivot and start ripping with our picks put ourselves right above 50% with everything. It starts right here. Week 7. Week 7. Anyway, we'll, we'll start with best bets. My brother's going to be taking Green Bay and the 4.5. I'm going to be taking Seattle and the 6. As for our Super Contest picks, our best 5, I'm going to take Seattle. Like I said, it was my best bet. I'm going to put them along with Houston getting the 7. Jacksonville, where I'm going to be on the opposite sides of my brother. Uh, Jacksonville in that 3. Tennessee in the 2.5. And, and New England in the 8 points. We both have New England. As for him, like I said, we're on opposite sides. He's going to take the Giants. He's also going to take the Patriots. So we got one against ourselves, one with ourselves. And then his other three picks are going to be Atlanta, Dallas, and the Chargers. So again, from the older Eggy, Seattle, Houston, Jacksonville, Tennessee, New England, and the younger one, it's Giants, Atlanta, Dallas, Chargers, and New England. Parlays, I am going to take a two-team parlay. I'm going to do Jacksonville and the three, Tennessee and the two and a half. My brother is doing a three-team parlay. He's going Green Bay, Dallas, and New England. As for teasers, uh, we actually, surprisingly enough, I thought we were going to be on the same side of one of these legs, and we are not. So I was looking at basically four teams, Cincinnati, Vegas, New England, and Dallas, teasing them all down. So again, taking the bigger favorites and bringing them to a point, two points. My brother is going a different route. He's going to go Indianapolis, teasing them up, Giants teasing them up, Atlanta teasing them up, and Baltimore teasing them down. So he's got three going with the dog and then bringing the Baltimore down uh, to be basically a pick And out of those ones that I mentioned, Bengals, Raiders, 
Patriots and Dallas. I think I'm going to go. I think I'm going to go Raiders and Raiders and Patriots. That's going to be my two team tease pick. I actually did more with the teasers when it comes to actually putting money on the line. But for my pick, I'm going to go Las Vegas and New England. If you really needed a third team of Dallas and Cincinnati, I think I'd probably throw Cincinnati in there for the third team. Prop bets, my brother and I both looked at uh, one person. Uh, He didn't list it here. His prop bet of the week was Jimmy G going over 249 and a half points. I was not looking at that one. But I will reference him when I talk about everything I was looking at. I was looking at Dak over the one and a half touchdowns, but that's minus 145 for that. So you're you're paying a little bit too much juice uh, in my book for Dak getting over one and a half touchdowns. In the same game, Goff over 250. Goff is really throwing the ball all over the field, and they're going to need it here coming off a bye against Dallas. The one guy I am going to go with here is Rodgers in over 233 and a half. I'm going to the well. He hit for me last week. I'm going to go back there again this week. And in the same game, and this is where my brother was also looking, and he threw this in as one of his prop bets, which I'll state later, is Lazard. He had him at 52 and a half. I've got him at 50 and a half as of this morning, thanks to DraftKings. And so I do like Rodgers. He is my prop pick of the week, but I was looking at Lazard. I just said Lazard. It's a it's a financial institution, financial company. Uh, Lazard, though. Uh, or is it Lazard? Oh, whatever. You know what the fuck I'm saying. DJ Moore was another one I was looking at, over 48 and a half yards. Pierce uh, rushing yards at 67 and a half over and Kittle at over 48 and a half. Those were all the ones I looked at. I went with Rodgers. My brother went with Jimmy G. Uh, look ahead lines. My brother did not look at any. I am looking at Colts commanders at minus six. That's a lot of points for the Colts. And if the commanders show something here with Heineke under center, I imagine that people will try to jump on that commanders line uh, with the six points for next week. Uh, and my brother, like I said, didn't pick any. So now we'll go to gambling. And here are our picks. Here we go, baby. I will start off with what I'm doing. I'm at 8,200. My brother is a little over 8,000. So we're both about 2,000 in the hole. I am going to do two parlays out of the gate. One two-team, one three-team. My two-team parlay is going to be Jacksonville, Tennessee, as I mentioned above. I'm going to put $100 on that. The I'm going to throw a third team in there, Seattle. So I'm going to go Jacksonville, Tennessee, Seattle, and I'm going to put $50 on that one. So I got a two and a three-team parlay. They're both correlated. My brother has two money line parlays going. He's got Green Bay, Dallas, and Baltimore all to win. And then he's got Kansas City, Chargers, and New England both to win. He's going to put 250 on each of those uh, money line parlays. Teases, I've got two. My brother's got one. I am going to do a three-team tease with what I said earlier. I'm going to go Las Vegas, New England, and I'm going to go Cincinnati with the three-team. I'm going to put 250 for 650 on that one. And then I'm going to throw in Dallas as the fourth team there, and I'm going to put $100 on that. So again, Cincinnati, Vegas, and New England, and then I'm actually going to make another one with all of those plus Dallas. As for my brother, he is doing Indianapolis, New the Giants, the Falcons, and Baltimore. So the teaser he mentioned above, he is going to put $100 on that. He's sticking to his guts. He's sticking to his guns there. Prop bets, uh, I've got one. I am going to do a parlay. Parlay props, that's where I won last week, which actually kept me a little bit over. Uh, I should have just went with my parlay. It was my money, my prop parlay last week. It was a gem. It was uh, Rogers. It was Kenneth Walker. And it was Justin Jefferson. They all hit over their yardage. Here, I'm going to go Rogers again. And then I'm going to do two that I mentioned DJ Moore and Kerry Kittle. This is the. We need you to win parlay. Uh, Moore over the 48 and a half points. Kittle over the 48 and a half uh, points. 48 and a half yards. Kittle over the 48 and a half yards. And Rodgers over the 235. As for my brother, he's just going to do three straight up uh, par- uh, prop bets. Jimmy G over his 249. Mostert over 61 and a half yards rushing. Uh, amazing, right? Edmonds is just done. Gone. You know. He has his ship has sunk as Mostert has taken over there in the backfield of Miami, and then Lazard. Uh, you know he he liked him. I liked him. He actually bet him here. Uh, I was thinking about putting him in my 
prop parlay, but I did not. My brother's going straight up here. Lazard, Moster, Jimmy G, all over their yardage. And like I said, my only props are the three prop parlay that I did. So there you go for week seven. Hopefully, like I said, this is where we turn it around. We uh, have not even been scraping by. We have been slowly sinking. I, I took a swing two weeks ago, and I missed. Uh, my brother has been right about here, so he, he went down early. And now we got to turn it around. we got to get into you know, green territory, or what the hell are we doing here? Just giving you losers every week. You know, it's not the, not the idea. So all the best to everybody with your gambling and your football watching for this Sunday. We will see you again next week, possibly Thursday, hopefully not Sunday. If uh, we get one in, you know, Thursday like we usually do, then you might even see Donald reappear next game day, next Sunday game day, or like he likes to call himself Donnie Diamonds, right? You know, so maybe Donald joins the program next Sunday and I, and I hand it off to him. Depends if we get it in. So, all right. Take care, everybody. Peace.